Are you new to compression? Have you tried to figure it out, but just don't get what all the fuss is about? If you've tried to use compression before, but haven't got the results that you're looking for, watch until the end of this video, because you'll learn three reasons that compression is commonly used in a mix. But first, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, DistroKid. DistroKid makes music distribution fun and easy with unlimited uploads and artists keep 100% of their royalties and earnings. Over a million artists rely on DistroKid to get their music onto online streaming platforms like Apple Music and Spotify. And now DistroKid services are more accessible than ever with their new iOS app. With the DistroKid app, you can see your DistroKid bank and get notified when you get new earnings and withdraw cash straight from the app. You can also check your streaming stats from Spotify and Apple Music, and you can edit your account details to add or change song lyrics or song credits. The DistroKid app is now available on iOS, so you can go to the App Store to download it. And if you haven't already, you can use the link in the description to get 7% off your first year subscription with DistroKid. And thank you to DistroKid for your continued support of the channel. Compression is an essential tool in audio engineering. It offers several benefits to enhance the listening experience and impact of audio recordings. Here are three reasons why compression is commonly used in a mix. Number one, dynamic control. Compression helps to control the dynamic range of audio signals by reducing the volume difference between loud and soft sections. Most compressors work by reducing louder sections of audio which exceed the threshold set by the user. Then, makeup gain is added to compensate for the gain reduction. This process evens out the overall level of a recording, which makes it sound more consistent, polished, and professional. So in our first example, we'll talk about leveling a vocal. Most lead vocal tracks are compressed to maintain consistent intelligibility of all the lyrics or words if it's a voiceover. Now for voice, I like to start with a 10 millisecond attack, something that's fast enough to grab the vocal, but it's not quite enough to completely kill the transient. And we're going to have a medium to slow release, something over 100 milliseconds to draw out some of the sustain. If you'd like to learn more about how attack and release affect tone and create what I call the compression envelope, you can check out this video. So we're going to set the threshold so that the compressor is only reducing the louder sections of audio. And then we're going to add in some makeup gain. Now you want to make sure to check against the bypassed signal to make sure you're not just making the whole track louder with makeup gain. The voice should become more prominent, forward, and easier to understand without being louder in volume. One foot after another and one foot step by step I take. One foot after another and each step's another mistake. One day after another and one minute every second's the same. One day after another and it's enough to make you go insane. This type of compression is called leveling. Compression is used to level out the volume discrepancies in a recording. Leveling brings the quieter parts of audio closer in level to the louder parts so that you get a more consistent and enjoyable listening experience. The quieter parts can be understood and the louder parts don't make you reach for the volume dial. This leveling effect is crucial in maintaining a consistent volume across different sections in a song or multiple tracks in a mix. Another example for this type of compression is mix bus compression. Typically for this application, I like to use a 10 millisecond attack with a long or auto release and set the threshold so it's doing around one or two dB of gain reduction. This provides a satisfying glue to the overall dynamics of your mix. The second reason to use compression is to control peaks and transients. Compression helps to control excessive peaks and transients that can cause clipping or are otherwise way too loud to fit into your mix. By reducing the level of sudden spikes in volume, compression allows you to increase the overall volume of a track without causing unwanted clipping or distortion. And what you end up with is a more consistent sound without any sudden jumps in volume. So in example two, we're going to even out some kick drum transients. For a song with a strong beat or a four on the floor type drum beat, a compressor with a fast attack and release may be used to ensure that each kick drum hit gets the same level of impact. 
Usually when you're working with a live drummer, there's going to be dynamic differences that may be a little inconsistent. This has to do with the energy levels between takes and the fact that not every hit is going to be the same intensity. So for this example, we'll be using N1176, which has a set threshold. We'll begin by finding a section that contains the loudest kick drum hits. Now to begin compressing, adjust the input gain to where the compressor is only reacting to the loudest hits, and then add in some makeup gain. Remember to check against the bypass signal to make sure that you're not making the whole track louder. This way, every bass drum hit that's not a ghost note will be more consistent in volume so that each kick gets more or less the same amount of impact without having the kick randomly become an ice pick in your eardrums. So this type of compression is called peak limiting. It typically has a faster attack and release and limiting implies a higher ratio, something over 10 to one. So let's try 12 to one on our 1176. Another application for this style of compression is for dynamic vocal spikes. You can use faster attack and release settings to focus on the transient of the vocals and use this in combination with a slower compressor, like in example one. One foot after another and one foot step by step I take one foot after another and each step's another mistake one day after another and one minute every second's the same one day after another and it's enough to make you go insane and reason number three to use compression tone shaping Compression can be used creatively to shape the tone of audio signals. By adjusting the attack and release settings, you can modify the envelope and character of a sound. For example, a fast attack time is going to grab onto transients and easily even out the dynamics of a sound. The compressor will take a firm hold of that transient, and it may end up darkening the tone of the drum. The release will determine how long the compressor is going to keep holding on once that loud transient has passed. With a fast release, the compressor pumps back to full gain quickly, and with a slow release, it's going to hold on longer and add some sustain to the sound as the needle slowly returns back to full volume. This slow release is responsible for what a lot of engineers call glue. And combining this slow release with a slow attack allows you to retain the punch of your transient while also adding some sustain or glue to the overall sound. So in example number three, we'll be tone shaping a snare drum. In this example, we'll be using an 1176 setup similar to example two, but we'll be focusing on how the tone of the drum changes with different attack and release settings. For this example, I'm using a song with a strong backbeat, and I'm using a compressor with a fast attack and release setting to ensure that each snare drum gets the same level of impact. Now, just like in the last example, using a live drummer, there are always going to be dynamic differences between each hit that we can even out using a compressor. Now, for this example, we'll use an 1176. I'm going to start by finding a section with the loudest hits. To begin compressing, adjust the input gain to where the compressor is reacting to the loudest transients, and then add some makeup gain. And always remember to check against the bypass signal to make sure that you're not just making everything louder. Really focus on the attack here. We want the attack as fast as possible. And listen for what happens when the compressor reacts so quickly to the transient of the drum. The fast attack is going to bite down on that transient, containing those hits and making them sound a bit darker. With a slower attack, the transient is going to poke through. We're going to get full transient and as a result, we're going to get a brighter sound.
With our release setting, a fast release is going to make the compressor pump and return to full gain as quick as possible. Whereas a slow release is going to glue everything together and increase sustain. The compressor isn't going to return to full volume right away. That's going to stretch out that return to full volume and it's going to create more sustain for the audio signal. These examples are here to get you started, but remember that the specific application and settings of compression will always depend on the audio source and your desired outcome. Time and experimentation are often necessary to achieve your desired results. So subscribe if this video helped you out, and don't forget to leave a like to let me know that you want to see more videos like this one. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video, Three Reasons Not to Use Compression. Bye for now, and happy mixing. Maybe it's time I walk away Can't save you from myself